who keep facing flooding are now looking at a pile of cash. But if they don't take it, will the city take their home anyway? If you like long odds, you will love the recall against Governor Polis. We have the best idea yet of how hard this is going to be for the governor's critics. While Colorado's last governor admits running for president is hard. So many kids in our community these days are being diagnosed with autism. So many that a center that works with them has had trouble finding enough space. And our Marshall Zellinger is getting bombed, and he's not alone. Why are the birds so angry? That's next. Sinkholes are real attention getters, you know, but they're also highly localized. It's just a hole in one spot. And we have showed you the sinkholes in Inglewood so many times that you might think that there's just one problem area. But in fact, Inglewood's flooding issue covers more than half that city. Tonight, Public Works is going to tell council if you can't beat the flooding, buy them out. Offer people cash to leave low lying areas. Here's Steve Steger. Ah, the joys of new home ownership. Me and my fiance bought it in uh, April uh, 2018. Uh, and then in July, we had our first flood. It didn't take long for Jake Mueller to realize the area he'd moved to near Tufts and Broadway in Inglewood was a problem. About two feet of uh, water in the in the backyard and got into the basement. His property is on a list of a handful of others that the city of Inglewood says could experience massive flooding should the city see a 10 year or 25 year flood event. In fact, Jake's property could see three to four feet of water in a serious flood. It was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty awful. We've told you about Inglewood's latest effort to fix the problems. A $50 million plan being floated in front of the city council could give property owners like Mueller something of a break. It includes $7 million to buy homes that the city says they can't save, even with huge fixes to drains. Really, this would be for the ones that can't be um, protected with the storm sewer pipes that we're proposing. The plan calls for an appraisal. Then the city would pay fair market value for homes until the $7 million is spent. It would be completely voluntary. Mueller isn't sure he'd take the city up on that offer. He and his fiance like the neighborhood. They could see raising a family here. There's things we can do to try and um, flood proof our house, like um, uh, like doing like maybe a rain garden or, you know, kind of drainage ditches. And if anyone can do that, it's him. <laughs> I'm a municipal stormwater inspector. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of ironic if you, <laughs> you could say it's ironic. Ironic though, he's somewhere else, not in Inglewood. The public works director for Inglewood told me there are about 17 homes that might fit this criteria for the $7 million. They've also researched building a new natural drainage area to get rid of some of that water. To do that, the city would have to acquire about 100 properties, which would be a lot more difficult. So as of now, the public works director told me they aren't suggesting that to city council. They'd rather try this fix with the money available for people who may not be helped yeah. to, uh, before they try anything else. Because when you hear him talk about about creating like a natural drainage area, they would need all the houses. I mean, you can't just get some of them and then be like, watch out, Dolores, here comes the water. Right. Yeah, you know? if Dolores yeah. is the lone holdout, then yeah. you've got you a problem. Her house. No, yeah. you can't. You, you're gonna have to take it somehow. And I, I think they don't want to pursue that now. Yeah. They'd rather try something else. You start talking eminent domain, people start to get all excited. So right now they're saying just voluntary buyouts for people yeah. who want them. All right, Steve, thank you. All that it is going to take to get a recall of Governor Polis on the ballot. All it will take is a record number of petition signatures, three times the current number of signatures. And the governor's critics have a fraction of time to do it, just two months, starting today. Polis is facing a recall, not for any kind of alleged wrongdoing, but for signing laws that Republicans don't like. The National Popular Vote Bill, Oil and Gas Regulation, Comprehensive Sex Ed, the Red Flag Gun Control Bill. The group behind the petition has two months to collect more than 631,000 signatures. That is more than 10,000 signatures a day. No petition signature gathering effort in Colorado history has ever come close to that number. The fight over a piece of old Denver is headed to court. It's the dairy farmhouse in North Park Hill that we've been telling you about. The homeowners are now suing the city over how it's handling the historic landmark designation application for that property. The homeowners want to demolish that old house at 36th and Grape. There are some neighbors who want to stop that by getting it designated a historic landmark because it used to be this old dairy farm. Denver's Community Planning and Development says the application was incomplete. They recommended they be rejected, but the Landmark Commission accepted it anyway. 
The homeowner's lawsuit says their neighbors don't have the goods to get a landmark designation, and it also dings that commission for allowing it to come in after the deadline. If you have been itching to go tubing on Boulder Creek, well then start blowing up your tubes. You can hit the water as soon as the weather clears. The Boulder County Sheriff's Office is lifting its tubing ban on the creek. It says that the water has slowed down enough and the volume is reduced to the point that people can safely go tubing so long as you have a life jacket. Search and rescue teams spend a lot of money and time saving people who ignore warnings and signs. Now, no one expects to need saving. And perhaps that's why only 12,000 people bought a Corsar card during the last fiscal year. That's the relatively inexpensive card, three bucks for a year, $12 for five years. The card designed to help cover the cost of search and rescue for people who play outdoors. Something tells me there are far more than 12,000 Coloradans who are out hiking, mountain biking, tubing, climbing, kayaking, and so on. The last year's worth of Corsar card sales brought in $83,000. In that same time frame, 31,000 was spent on rescue operations, but the state also paid out more than $353,000, providing local law enforcement with equipment and training needed for rescues. Someone dropped out of the Democratic presidential primary today, and it was not former Governor John Hickenlooper. Congressman Eric Swalwell is the man who is leaving the party. Hick's still hanging in there. Today, he told the Des Moines Register that his plan is to spend more time in the early voting states of Iowa and New Hampshire. And he told the newspaper that he tried fundraising, but that it was hard. While Hick loops in Iowa, another prominent Democrat is getting into the Senate primary to face Republican Senator Cory Gardner. Now, Hick's been urged to run for the Senate, but he has said that he doesn't want to and said that he wouldn't be very good at it. State Senator Angela Williams does want it and does think she would be good at it. Senator Williams it. represents Northeast Denver in the state legislature. There, she's focused on criminal justice reform and business issues. Williams joins a crowded field of a dozen or so Democrats already challenging Gardner, who is expected to be one of the most vulnerable incumbent senators in 2020. Denver is getting a new music venue. It'll be weeks now before it opens, though we found local artists already adding some local color to the Mission Ballroom. We wanted to go with local artists, but at the same time, it was really important to us that they wanted to work with us and work with the music. The goal with this piece was to try to have something that everybody could relate to. This is the topography of Denver. North is that way. I think I-25 in Colorado is somewhere about here. This round part is the top of Cap Hill. The Mission Ballroom in the map is right here. This door is basically the door that all the performers will come through before they hit the stage, so I want it to be super colorful. You can kind of see where everyone's going. So they get that blast of energy and color and creativity right before they start performing. This is the main entrance right here. So this will be a huge focal point that will kind of pull you in. Um, and that's kind of the point of it. It has the rhythm that we wanted to see. We've never been able to implement so much art to a space like this. So to really see the art work with the music, it's an exciting thing for us. We can't wait. The Mission Ballroom in Rhino takes the wraps off August 7th with the Lumineers. The best friend for a Colorado trout is a Colorado mule. Colorado Parks and Wildlife used mules to haul rare Hayden Creek cutthroat trout up to their new home recently. The mules carried saddle tanks with hundreds of fish inside. They hiked six miles up a steep trail to Cottonwood Creek in West Cliff. The fish are tiny now, just four inches, but they're important because they're the offspring of the trout saved from the Hayden Pass fire, which burned near Canyon City in 2016. Aquatic biologists ran in there to get 158 of the fish out of the creek before the ash fell and killed them. We only had them in the South Prong of Hayden Creek was the only stream that we had those those cutthroat in. So they are pretty rare. Um, we're working to try to get maybe three to five populations on the landscape in the Arkansas River Basin. Um, and hopefully that'll kind of protect 
protect it from other wildfires or other uh, devastating events. Good save by Parks and Wildlife because they went back and they checked Hayden Creek after the fire had burned over. There was not a single living Hayden Creek cutthroat trout. About 1 in 50 children in Colorado are diagnosed with autism. We have over 180 children on our waiting list alone. For one treatment center, it's now become a matter of space. Mountain biking? Nah. Who needs the extra wheel? And Marshall Zellinger has a very literal warning to runners. Heads up. Nest. Nest continues with birds a buzzing. Buzzing people out at Sloan's Lake. It happened to our Marshall Zellinger last week and again today. Neighbors there want everyone to be warned. Heads up. The day started just like any other on Sloan Lake. Wakeboarding, cycling, and bird watching. We were one of the first that noticed the pattern. Ah, yes, the pattern. We would actually have a little bit of a guessing game as to who he was going to attack next. It could be a Dateline NBC. I got dive bombed by a red winged blackbird. Melanie Lewis never even saw her attacker coming. It seems like this time of year in the early summer, they like to protect their nests, which are over here, so they like to kind of buzz you. Like this woman and this one. All right, it scared me a little, but I'm all right. <laughs> or any of the women captured in these videos recorded by Robert Randall. It was not too hard to profile the victims because the victims were all blonde, traveling east, usually with ponytails. But our suspect has gotten more bold. His preferred type is becoming less discriminatory. He's now going after men and people going west instead of east. Like when he came after me. Ah! Or this guy a few times. Or me again. Ah! Or this guy, but not this guy. I don't think that's his type. He's not moving fast enough. He's got to be somewhat jogging, moving. The smart move is to take the trail wide until he no longer has a nest to protect. Or take your chances to feel like an extra in the birds. He's totally showing off. Look, this happened to me on Thursday, and I didn't think anything of it. And I'll give kudos to the Denver Post for trolling next door and doing a story on it and making me realize this is scary. Uh, Ryan Herrer tells me it happened to him three weeks ago. I talked to Terry Tomsick. She's the neighbor who likes to watch and put bets on who gets hit next. She does not want anybody harming this bird. Neither do I. I'm just going to be smart enough to not have an encounter that close again. You want you want to know how I've stayed safe? Don't run. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You solved the puzzle. Marshall, thank you. Birds Gone Wild, the new Netflix series coming soon to your TV. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful up in the high country. We had a few rain showers earlier, the same in Denver, but so far all the heavy storms have stayed south and east of the city and temperatures were comfortable today. Compliments of a weak front that moved through this morning. We are tracking the potential for severe storms with hail and wind on the far eastern plains in the severe thunderstorm watch area in blue. And there is a flash flood warning out for a storm that's producing heavy rain south of Akron. Tracking east northeast, these storms will move out in just a few hours. High pressure begins to build in from the southwest. The really warm air is off to the east of us, but we're headed back to the 90s here in the next couple of days. And the storms tonight, I think, will be relatively gentle for Denver. A brief shower, rumble of thunder, then skies clear. We get a little push of easterly winds and fog tomorrow morning, and then a mostly sunny, a dry day coming up with a break from storms for a change. And so in the city for tonight, partly cloudy, 57. Still might see a brief rain shower, a little lightning, but we took it out of tomorrow's forecast. With Temperatures near 90 for the next three to five days. Slight chance of a gusty storm Wednesday and then again on Saturday afternoon. And what a weekend to get out for a beautiful hike. This is a gem lake hike, a gem of a hike up at Rocky Mountain National Park. We've got uh, so much more ahead on the weather coming up. For the longest time, an old farmhouse was one of the best places for young Coloradans with autism to find treatment. There's a, a, you know, classrooms that used to be bedrooms uh, when it was a farmhouse. Um, a gymnasium, if you will, that we call the big room, that used to be a giant living room. Now, an upgrade. Some room to grow. Firefly is going to have an actual school. That's next. So one tricky thing about tracking autism in our state is that we know that the numbers are growing. 
but federal health researchers say about half the kids with autism in Colorado are not getting the evaluations that they need. For one local treatment center, it's been a basic issue of space. Our Byron Reed has the story. This magnificent room here is going to be our boardroom. For the past year and a half, Jesse Ogas has been looking. But when you look here. And now has found the perfect place to call home. We raised half of our capital campaign. We raised three million so far, which allowed us to buy this building debt free. Ogas is the executive director of Firefly Autism, a center that offers therapy and support programs for students living with the disorder. Today, it's one in 58 children born every day in our state being diagnosed on the autism spectrum. What color? We have over 180 children on our waiting list alone. The group says they've been making do, operating in about 12,000 square feet for about the past 16 years. Originally it was a farmhouse. There's a, a, you know, classrooms that used to be bedrooms uh, when it was a farmhouse. Um, a gymnasium, if you will, that we call the big room, that used to be a giant living room. This beautiful new home of ours gives us over 29,000 square feet of usable space. The new building was bought from the Jefferson County School District. It used to be the Sebesky Academy. Along with a little bit of history. What's relevant about that is Dr. Sebesky was actually one of our first psychologists in Firefly Autism's early days. Making it easier for Ogas to make a move. Firefly is going to have an actual school. Into a place that was meant to be. We're so excited that we're now going to, to, to put Colorado on the map when it comes to autism treatment. For next, I'm Byron Reed. They still have a lot of work to do on that new old building. Asbestos abatement, carpeting, stuff like that, and they're hoping to move in by early next year. She went hiking with the baby this weekend. She loved it, but we just missed the most Colorado thing that one of you saw on that same trail. Photo hit my email as we were driving down the hill. So I'll share it along with your feedback next. The most Colorado thing we've seen today is mountain biking, minus the extra wheel. This guy decided to uh, go with the uh, unicycle up the trail. Molly Boyle spotted him at Mount Falcon Park, just south of Morrison. I was on that trail an hour before that photo came in. I swear I did not see that guy. I would have remembered him, but that is the most Colorado thing we've seen today. Bill in French wrote in asking where you can sign the petition to recall Governor Polis. So it's going to be one of those physical petitions that they pass outside the big box stores and grocery stores and so forth. And at this point, it appears that the organization is a bit disorganized. Kyle Jordan wanted to know where you can find one of those Corsar cards, the ones that fund search and rescue that we talked about today. I tweeted out the link, so if you find my last tweet, it's right there and you can order them online. And some old school feedback coming in from Margie in Cortez, who cut this out of her local newspaper, said that's so Colorado, it's people rescuing a deer from a flowing canal. I love this and I love that her handwriting reminds me of my grandmother's. It is immaculate. See you next time.